And a very good morning to you, boys and girls. It's, oh, uh, Friday the 23rd of August, 2013. Chris Weird welcoming you to today's uh, United Kingdom talk. And I gather, I gather a moment of excitement today. I gather my best friend is listening live, live, hopefully not watching, because he's driving his car. It's got this one of those BMW things with a come down roof and all that. They're a fold down roof, come down roof, fold down roof. It's all the same thing. He's listening live in his car. I didn't know you can actually listen and watch a show on your uh, live while it's on the mobile phone. Did you know that on on the iPhone and probably the other um, Android things as well? Did you know that? I had no idea. So, good morning to Ron, who's at the moment driving on the M25 car park, thundering towards Waltham Cross, which is where his mum and dad lives. He's going to visit them today. Oh, isn't it nice? Nice to be able to visit mummy and daddy. I hope you do the same, boys and girls. Always look after mummy and daddy. Keep them on the phone. Go and visit, because you'll miss them when they're gone. You absolutely will. Now, I do hope we won't be uh, interrupted this morning by more visits from the post office. I do keep ordering things off the... Do you order things? I love it. Amazon. You know, not over-expensive things. Today, this week, I have ordered... <laughs> I have ordered this week a little camera for my car. Now, because you know I like gadgets. This camera sits on the dashboard in your car and permanently, when you're driving, films everything in front of you. Right? So that if these dimwits pull out in front of you or anything like that, and you have to, you, you, you crash into the back of them because they slam on their brakes. Because this is a new, what's it called? A scam. This is a scam. What happens is that people pull out in front of you, okay? And then slam on their brakes and then take you to court for um, all sorts of bits and pieces, um, uh, 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 whiplash and all that business. They pretend they get the whiplash. Yeah, you know, that's when the head, you know, you get banged up the back of your car. You go, oh, 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 and you've got whiplash. And they claim thousands of pounds for that, which is why yours and my um, insurance costs are so high. Because of these numpties that are constantly claiming for whiplash that doesn't actually exist. And, of course, they claim for the damage to the front of their car, where it's them who actually pulled out in front of you and slammed on their brakes. Well, of course, if you've got one of these cameras in the front of the car, permanent recording everything, then you have proof that they did it. Because at the end of the day, it's only your word against theirs if, if you was to hit them up the back. And generally, I think it's... I'm right... I'm not 100% sure of this, but I think I'm right in saying that if you're the one who goes into the back of another car, you get blamed because they say you were too close to the car in front. Let me just turn on my air conditioning in the room just a minute. That's better. It's a bit warm today. We're having the best ever summer. Anyway, back to that in a minute. So I've ordered a little camera. Uh, I've ordered a new tambourine. But don't laugh for my karaoke nights. Oh, yes. You don't just think I stand there and press buttons at my karaoke nights, do you? No. I got ca I got tambourine. I've ordered a new triangle because I've lost the um you know the little the the, the beater. Do you know the beater that you get with a triangle? Ah, huh? yes, I've lost that. And it doesn't matter what else you use, it doesn't sound as good as as the beater that that you that that actually comes with the triangle. If you see what I mean. So I ordered one of those. That's already come out. She's downstairs. You don't want me to go and get it, do you? I don't, oh, just a minute. What's happening here? Good morning. Oh, how marvellous. Well, uh, they, they, can't, they, they can't hear you if you ring the mobile phone, can they, you idiot? No, no, no. I will be giving a number out shortly. Okay? I'm just, I'm just doing my introductory chat. We don't do all the phone calls straight away. We've got to do an introductory chat. Thank you. Right, okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, that's my best friend. He rings on the mobile phone in the hope that it, it doesn't work like that. You've got to ring on the number, which I will be giving out shortly. Don't worry. You will be able to communicate with the show. Apparently... 
He's he's got my little little YouTube video firing away on his on the dashboard in the car. Just keep your eyes on the bloody road. I have to tell you, my best mate is. I don't like the driving. I really don't like the driving. He's one of those that cuts across from the fast lanes to the exit at the last minute on the motorway. Oh yes, you all know them, don't you? You all know them. Anyway, back to my thing. So I've got that and um, a, a triangle. <clears throat> I've got maracas. Maracas. Yep. And was that something else I've bought today? Oh, yes. Castanets. And the castanets on the triangle have already arrived. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for the camera and the tambourine, which may arrive while this program is in, proce in progress. I may have to rush down to the door and collect it from my lovely delivery man, who will either be the post office, or it might be the man from DPD called Morrow. Yes, Morrow is my personal DPD delivery man. He's a very, very, very nice man. He's from Africa, and he's got, like, an accent. My name is Morrow. I remember the second time I saw I was just talking to him at the front door. That often happens. People come to my front door, as long as they're trying to sell something. If they're trying to sell something like gas, electricity, mobile telephones, or my favourite one, Sky Television, if, if, I, if I get the slight sniff that they're trying to sell me something at the front door, bang it goes. Shut in their ugly bastard faces. Goodbye! Thank you. No, nope, don't want to buy anything. So, oh, we're not actually selling anything. Oh, what are you here for? We're just here to tell you about our electricity. Bang! Door closed. No. Don't talk to salesmen. Don't uh, communicate with Betterware magazine people. Or what's that other magazine that keeps coming for the post, a little plastic bag? Is it Betterware? I think there's another one as well. There's a sign on my door that says, No salesman, no this, no that. OK, there is a sign on my door. So why don't they bloody well read it? Don't come to my front door and think that I'm going to be friendly when there's a sign like that on the door. Better wear catalogues. Nope. They, get, they come for the little, the little box and they go straight in the bin. I really don't need all these little plastic products in my house. Thank you. However, delivery men, I love them. They bring me these little boxes from Amazon where I've made things with one click ordering. Have you got that set up on your Amazon? Oh, yes. You see the item, you click once, two days later it arrives. How fantastic is that? Oh, I know, you're thinking to yourself, no, oh, it's sad, but it's killing off the shops and I street. Okay, well, go and use them then. Go and use them. Don't sit there complaining that you can't use the shops because they're all closed because you've been buying stuff on Amazon, dear. You can't have it both ways. I love it. I love it. You click, it comes. Click, it comes. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everything was as easy as that? One click and it would just come. I love it. Now, what was that noise? Oh, sorry, just a minute. Someone sent it in Skype messages. Oh, yes. Good morning, Shania. Shania's with us this morning. Shania on Izzily Widgets, which other people know as the Arla Whites. Good morning, Shania. And, um, aha, Marge is with us from Oklahoma. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the road. Marge says, good morning, Chris. I woke up a moment, so I thought I would say hi. Big work day, so back to bed, bed again. You mean to say you've woke up You've woke up just to say a quick hi, and now you're disappearing again, Marge? I'm impressed with that. You woke up specially to say hi. Thank you, Marge. She says, did you get your phone fixed or a new one that you broke? That's coming up in the show, Marge. Don't worry. It's coming up in the show. They don't even know it's broke yet. And they don't even know how it happened. You don't know how it happened, actually, do you, Marge? No. It's nice weather in Oklahoma today. Bit warm like it is there. Are you making a one-man band? <laughs> I am a one-man band. Believe me, Marge. Don't really work. I don't work with anyone, really. I, 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 I work in a team... If you see what I mean. Like uh, where I work in Belushi's. Uh, we've got a fantastic team. We all work together. There's the bar staff, the door staff, management and me. And we all work together. There's not one thing. I've always said there's not one thing that brings a lot of people into a club or a pub. It's many different things working together. You can have one 
big thing perhaps in a pub, you know, or a club, that doesn't quite fit in. Perhaps this particular person might be, you know, not, not particularly nice. You know, you can have that sometimes. But generally, I mean, there might be one place where, where, where that's occurring, I don't know. But um, generally, no, the places I work at, we all work as teams. And it works, works very well together. I think um, when you get a person who thinks they are more important than everyone else, that's, that's always a recipe for disaster. And I've seen that loads of times. Someone, you know, might come up and say, oh, you can't do this without me, and all that old rubbish. Well, you get rid of the person, and, and, and it still carries on. <laughs> you know. I mean, I've seen that a few times as well. It's a shame, really, isn't it? You can't be going around thinking that you're bigger than everyone else. You fit in, you fit in, and that's it. Once you start thinking you're bigger than everyone else, you're out that door, dear. Out that door. You know. Okay then, <clears throat> so, where did we get? We got to the musical instruments. We've done the musical instruments already, haven't we? Oh yes, so the mobile phone, was there oh, we've got a couple of messages here, just a minute. Ah, oh, good morning to Mike. Good morning to Mike, who is in Southampton. Have you been to Southampton, boys and girls? I don't know if that's really a, a holiday destination or not, Southampton. Anyway, um, Mike is also a DJ. And he says, I've just got uh, a regular slot at a social club as uh, the other DJ walked out. Apparently tried to overcharge the pensioners and Dart's charity team <laughs> £100 more than normal. Oh, not the pensioners, dear. Never, ever overcharge the pensioners. You will never, ever be forgiven again. I'm not surprised he walked out. How can you overcharge pensioners? Mind you, I'm overcharged for everything that I buy. I am permanently being ripped off by everyone. Whether it's a train fare, I'm going on a train later actually, a train fare, or, or food, or buying something. I'm permanently overcharged by e electricity, gas, water. I'm being permanently overcharged by everyone. I've noticed that. Um, Mike's <laughs> charged my £100 more than normal, and all he does is put an album on and gets drunk. So hey-ho, I've gone down well. Pardon? What do you mean? Oh, sorry. So, hey-ho, I've gone down well twice already, and the, I hope they paid you extra for that. Did they? I see greed is still alive and well among some of our rotten colleagues. Karma! Must tune in now, sleep later. My, so Mike is with us this morning. Hi from Southampton. That's my cup, <laughs> you thief. This is my Sports Direct cup. Do you like me? I've got a Sports Direct mug with me. They're only, I think they're about 99 pence. When you buy something from Sports Direct, as you well know, most of my clothes come from Sports Direct. Indeed, uh, my best friend Ron is shocked and horrified, who is listening this morning in the car, in the car driving. He's listening this morning and is shocked and horrified to learn that I have purchased six new T-shirts for our upcoming holiday, all from Sports Direct. Six T-shirts for £24. I mean, you can't go wrong, dear. He goes and buys t-shirts, right, 60, 75 pound each, each, for one t-shirt, 75 quid. He does. I've bought six t-shirts for 24 quid. They're good quality. Actually, funnily enough, I seem to have them here beside me. I'm not going to bring them all out, because I've got all different colours, right? So what are we doing was two for eight pounds. So I bought six. So that's 16, 29, 20, 24 quid, isn't it? I've got a mauve one, a lovely mauve one. Look, mega deal, five pounds or two for eight pounds. Oh, hang on, where's the two? Or two, two for eight pounds, 16, 79, 90. So there's a, there's a purple one, there's a white one. There is a red one, which is not in its bag because I try one on, you see. Oh, I've come a crop of many, many, many times buying stuff that um, uh, doesn't fit. There's a blue one. There's a black one. And there's a grey one. How fantastic! And I'm under... Oh, uh, there's that... Oh, and then there's that um, coming of... Oh, I wondered where that book was. Do you remember that book uh, that Mike gave me, Ron? I couldn't find that. I've just found that now in this bag. 
So I'm quite pleased about that. I've also bought a pair of trainers from Amazon for thirteen pounds, and Ron is giving me strict instructions. Although he doesn't like the items I purchased because they're cheap, I am under strict instructions not to use those until the holidays. So I've got to got to leave them, in, and he he wants proof. You know, they've got to be left in the bag. Ah, oh, we have a phone call. Good morning. Who's calling in on the gold shots? What a lovely piece of music. That's strange. That call always comes in on a Friday morning. Someone playing music. We love it. We love it. But unfortunately, there's not time to listen to music on this programme. Uh, Marge says, when do you take calls? I'm just going to take one now, Marge. Um, from uh, Ron, actually. Ron, if you want to give us a call in, I'm going to give you the number now. Hold back everyone else. I know that millions of people waiting to call in. The switchboard is alive. The switchboard is alive with the sound of phone calls. With calls I have taken for a thousand years. Yeah, because he's got to call in first because at the moment he's driving. Are you ready, Ron? Here comes a number. Pay attention. 020 8133 6358. Okay? 020 8133 6358. I shall be taking you on the red phone. On the brand new red phone. Have you rung yet? 020 8133 6358. Perhaps I'll text that because that might be a bit difficult for the poor old soul to remember because he's losing his mind gradually. <sighs> then you can hear my, my mate. See if he managed to keep his um his bucket mouth to himself today while we're doing our live show. Where is it now? Uh send a message. Oh, hang on a minute. Eight one three three. Have I given out the wrong wrong number there? <laughs> I, that looks wrong. Hang on a minute. There's so many things. I, oh no, that's right. Eight one double three six. There it is. There we are. There we are. Uh, Shania says, "Nice singing from thee this morning." I do try, Shania. I'm not the world's best singer. I'm aware of that. I'm not really the world's best singer, but I can hold a tune to, to sort of do a karaoke night, if you see what I mean. All right. Now, boys and girls, uh, oh, uh, unlucky Ron. Uh, unlucky Ron, Marge has got there first. Good morning, Marge. I'm just going to take one. Hey? Sorry, I had, had to cut off the new tote. Oh, you sound yeah. good this morning. Marge? Hey? Hi, Hi, Mr. Reardon. Good morning, Marge. All right? My name is Marge, and I'm calling from Technoglobics. Technoglobics? Who's that, then? We are a repair re re business located in your area, yeah, Bracknell. The reason for my call today, Mr. Reardon, is that a friend of yours, Ron, recently had us repair his desktop, and he kindly passed on your details. Oh. Can I ask you, Mr. <laughs> You've got to do it without laughing, Marge. You'd be no good at that job, my darling. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I'm sorry. That was supposed to be... I was supposed to be a telemarketer. <laughs> I... I was trying to be a telemarketer. <laughs> oh, no, I don't do those. You're lucky. You're Can lucky, Marge. You Mr. Reardon, how many PCs do you have at home? And how are they working for you in terms of speed? Oh, I thought supposed to have an Indian accent, too. <laughs> Marge, let me ring you back, because I've got that call coming in now that I was waiting for. from. from no, I'm uh, sorry. From I was Facebook. just trying to prank you. And I have to I, ring I, you go straight back, back Marge. Don't worry, I will ring you back. Okay. Ta-da. <laughs> There we are, Marge, on line one. On, on line two, is that you, dear? Oh, first-time caller. Are you a first-time caller? Is that the United Kingdom Talk Radio Show? It is. First it, is. Caller. it is the United Kingdom Talk Radio Show. Good morning, first-time caller. Are you speaking from a vehicle? Have you pulled over? I do hope you have, or are you on hands-free um, equipment? Hands -free. I'm on my hands-free. I'm currently driving through a place called White Web. It's very beautiful. Where the Whitewood Museum of Transport is. You're, we're driving so, yeah, through where? Where? It's a place called White Webs. White Webs? 
white webs, yeah. White as in the colour of yeah. webs as in what spiders make, white webs. Oh. And there's a, there's a museum there called the White Webs Museum of Transport. It's very, very interesting. Oh, is that like London Transport and all that, the old trains and buses? It, it is, yeah, a little bit like that, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I, it's very, very last, interesting. Last time in the I, middle of the countryside. Last the time the I went there, that used to be in um, Cyan Park, didn't it? Uh, I don't know, uh, but you'd probably remember the steam trains and things like that, wouldn't uh, you? I beg your pardon, what do you mean? Well, Excuse me, I've, I've been on many. Right. I've, I've been. I've been on. I have been. Shut up. I've been on many, many steam trains. I don't understand. And I've asked you. This is, by the way, this is my best friend Ron pretending to be a first-time caller, which is not. By the way, no swearing on this program, please. We don't do I swearing. Don't swear. I very rarely We don't swear. do swear. And I've asked you many, many times to come on a little steam train trip with me, you know, to one of the many steam trains that we have over the UK, and you don't appear, and you you, you don't seem to be interested You've never all. asked me. Eh? You've never asked me. Well, would you like to go on one? Yes, I would. Well, where, where do that look? Because there's one quite close, I think. Yeah, you can take me on the Orient Express. No, not the Orient Express, dear. You, oh. you're not paying. Why should I pay? Because you invited me. Well, I don't think so. Hang on. Oh. Steam trains near Bracknell. One, one second. Steam so I'm just coming up to the new Tottenham Hotspur football training ground here. How uninteresting to start talking about football on this programme. Overpaid oh. puffs running around a pitch. That's what they are. Yeah, and they're not very good. They're not very good role models to children, are they? They're not very good yeah. role models. But they're, they're, out, but they're out doing things to lots of different people when they shouldn't be. At oh, the end of the day. they've got about ten girlfriends. Well, there's camera each. crews. Well, there's camera crews outside. Oh, what? There's cam some camera crews. There must be something going on. There's camera well, quickly, crews quickly, outside. pull over and get out. You must be on the television, dear. I'm always on the television. You must yeah, be on the you television. Know me. Now, shut up a minute. There are two. There is Pinewood. Oh. Frimley Lodge. Here, yeah, that's near us. One minute. At Camberley, Frimley Lodge Park and Miniature Railway. Frimley and Ascot Locomotive Cough, they have a miniature railway within the 59 acre Frimley Lodge Park. What was that? What do you mean? Oh. Do you know, I think the computer's just crashed. Can you hear me? Oh, hang on. No, no, we're back. We're back. I think we had a little mini crash then. A little mini a crash. A little mini crash? Yeah, yeah. So don't you wonder... It's a little miniature railway, and you kind of sit over it. It's like, um... How can I put it? It's like, um... A rat... Riding it's a, a miniature horse. It's... It's... You, you, you kind of step over it like a... Like a... Like if you was to ride a dog. Oh. They're low like no, that. No, go on where we sit on it and have, like, tea and things. Oh, right, okay. Yes, well... I don't know. Don't know, really. That would be a lot nicer. It might anyway, be. Anyway, what, um... What kind of are you talking about on your, uh, on your radio show today? What do you mean? Well, what current affairs are you talking about? What's, what's the list of what you're talking about? Well, we're talking about all sorts of things this morning. We're talking about what, sorry? Orchard. We're talking about all sorts of things this morning. Okay, well, what would you like me to what would you like me to throw into discussion? <laughs> Bring something up. I don't know. I think actually, uh, this dreadful feeling the live link has just gone down for some reason. One moment, please. I will have to just check that to see if this is still working or not. No, nope, it's gone wrong. It's all gone oh. wrong. Funny how your call should make it all go wrong like that. Do you want me to? Do you want me to call back? Eh? Hey? No, we carry I'll on. Call back because it's all being recorded. This this will carry on the recording, you see. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Is this for, is this for the um, is this for the podcast? Yes, for oh, the wonderful. for the podcast. Now I've got to I've got to sit here now and try and sort out what's gone wrong. Let me have a look. I don't know. There he is. Uh, yes, back actually, now. Seems uh, to be dreadful back. feeling. The live link is just. It seems to be working oh. now. There we are. Back again. Can someone tell me? Can someone verify that it is still working? I know Shania. Are you there, Shania, darling? Can you tell me that this is still working all right? Or Mike? Sorry. Is anyway, Shania, carry on. That, carry on. Is what that Shania saying? Twain? Is that Shania Twain? Uh, where I no, no. It's young Shania, who's on the Isle of Wight. Well, one of my youngest listeners. I think she's... 63. 14. 
Well, what's a young girl like that listening to you yep, for? Shania surely says she it's... Must, surely, Shania... She, surely she must want to listen to Kiss or, or, I don't know, Radio 1 or something a bit more updated. Shania says we are back. We have come back. There was a, there was a slight glitch in the system. Well, no, why would, she, why would she want to listen to Kiss? It's full, of, it's full like... of DJs that just talk at you and not to you, isn't it? Well, that's a bit like you when we're in the car. You talk at me. I don't think so. You know, take me here, because apparently I'm just your driver. You are just the driver. Just take me there. Just take me there. <laughs> I, I might be getting the train this afternoon. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I think I might, just, I might just get the train to the hospital this afternoon. Are you going to wear, are you going to wear dark glasses and cover your face so you don't get recognised? Yeah, I've, well, it's terrible, really. Usually get mm. accosted on the train. Excuse me, are you Chris Reardon from United Kingdom Talk? That happens all the time, do you? Yeah. All the time. I know. I know. Awful. Absolutely awful for you. <laughs> so, yeah, traffic on the M25 was very, very good. Good. Of course, I was driving within the speed limit all the way, as you do. Good. Um, good. Uh, yeah, very good. Oh, um, Sh Shania, I'm Shania, the town area. Shania is a little older than we thought. She is 16 years old. Oh, hello, Shania. You 15-year-old girl. How are you? 16. Yeah, Hang on uh, a minute. Hang on a minute. My quite good. I've just my driven into town. My nephew's and, 16, and isn't he? Built up. Hello? My nephew's 16. Have I you? No, my nephew's 16, isn't he? I don't think... Oh, he's got a girlfriend now, Shania. Oh, too late, Shania. Oh. It's a bit of a long-distance relationship, isn't it, dear? Yeah, it might not be long-term. Yeah, it might not be long-term, Shania. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> right, I'm going now. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I thought you wanted me to to give you my points of what's going on and, I have, and give uh, my well, you my you had perfect opportunity to do that in the last ten minutes. Instead, you've just rabbited it on about rubbish. And yeah, I have you. other calls, other on. people waiting to call in. The switchboard is viewers, alive. How many viewers have you got? How many viewers have you got at the moment, Six here? million. Six million, it says there. It says six. Six. Which must mean six million. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry? Well, thank you for letting me talk on your show, dear. Well, that's OK. You're always, always welcome to spend as much time as you want talking to me. I don't mind going even as much as 20 seconds. As long thank as you, you want. 20 seconds, 19 seconds, it's all the same to me. You just talk as long as you want, dear. Thank you very much, dear. Have a good day and let me know what happens at the hospital later. Goodbye, viewers, all six of you. Are you six, six million, dear. Six million. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. There we are. That's my my little friend uh, Ron there, driving, driving through the streets of um. Well, not through, not quite through the streets of London. Now, where's Marge? We've got to ring Marge back now because I did promise her. Marge, Marge, Marge. Oh, I can't find you now. Oh, Marge, I cannot find. Is that you there? In just a minute. Marge, recent. Is it recent? There she is. Oh, Mar no, there she is. Marge, let's give her a little call there. And we can finish talking to Marge. I don't mean to cut people off like that, but, um, yeah, I knew he was going to ring at that point, Marge, so we have to just uh, do that quickly. Good morning, Marge. Good morning, Chris. Morning. Do you like my red phone, by the way, Marge? It's good, isn't it? I, I love your red phone. I'm sorry about a while ago. I did, I'm a little bit of a lag here. I didn't know you were having another call when I called <laughs> I was going to give you a little prank and act like a telemarketer, and I just totally flipped. Yeah, but <laughs> yes. you give it away with your accent. We don't really get many people with an Oklahoma accent <laughs> ringing up I, and trying I, to sell me Scott I Television. Thought about, I thought about finding a job, you know, and being a telemarketer, you know. Hello, Chris. Oh. No, I, that's a sexy tell. <laughs> you're, you're lucky you don't get cut off straight away, to be honest. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, Apparently, I wonder we, how you apparently, did that. We, apparently, we disappeared for five seconds, so I don't know what happened there, but it it just appeared again. So I'm quite pleased about that. Oh, you know, after you know, I kept going on how I was lucky that I didn't get those, and all of a sudden now I'm getting them. And my mother, it, that it actually upset her. She got a call from a guy that said, "You left your phone number on my car." Oh, really? You, you bet, yeah, that you bent my fender. And I want to, you know, boy, he was getting all irate. My mother doesn't even drive. She doesn't even go anywhere. <laughs> and he called her back, and he said, well, you left your phone number on my, and it was an unlisted number. We tried to call it back, you know. How, and how then old, the next, how old next is your, time it was restricted. How old is your mom, March? 
he really upset my mom. She yeah, asked, well, let me, so let me well. cut her. How old is Sorry? your mum, Marge? How old is your mum? Uh, she's 70. Well, you asked me that. I think she's either 73 or 72. 20 is years she... older than me. And is, I she, just quite, is she quite poor? So is she, she quite mobile and all that? Oh, yeah, but she's been having problems the last few months oh. off and on. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's age or dealing with my brother, but <laughs> um, she just don't drive right now when she's having dizzy spells and things. But she What's hadn't been going anywhere. But you, you must I can't ask believe this person. You must ask her what is the secret of a long life. <clears throat> uh, the secret of a long life is not having stress. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. You she's got like. a I, the spirit to me is what get, keeps you going yeah. as long oh, as yeah, you don't get yeah, hit yeah. by a train or run over or something. Yeah. You know, if, if your mind goes, your body goes. I know that. I think my mind went years ago, Marge. To be honest, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, not that way. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I, I mean, the I'm, will I don't think the will is what I mean. I don't think I get too stressed really. My my mate who just heard on the phone, he gets terribly stressed. Terribly stressed. Worrying this, worrying that all the time. You've got to take yeah. things more easy, I think. You know, take take things a yeah. little bit easier. Don't worry too much and that. Although, you know, there, there are certain things I get um, uh, stressed about, like going on holiday. I get, I get very stressed when I'm about to go on holiday or, or, or come home, or indeed while I'm there. I mean, I, I think I'm, I should really sit at home and not go anywhere, really. You, you know, for me, this is, I'm not a psychologist, but I think we deal more within our brain as one, than what's actually going on. Yeah. You know, yeah. we think about things that never even happen. That's <laughs> you what, know, well, they don't. Yeah, that's you're so right. It don't really happen. Nothing's happening. What is it to worry no, about? No, worry about this and nothing ever comes of it. Yeah. Now, of course, you know, things can happen. This is a this is life, you know. Just like his poor boy uh, in the news this week, you know, he went for a jog. And three teenagers, one of the teenagers, uh, shot and killed him, hit him in the back, you know, with a gun. And it's about ten miles from me. And just because they were bored, you know, I said, there's something else besides being bored. Teenagers oh. can be bored. That don't mean they go out and shoot people, you know. No, but I think <laughs> that's it must a be, sad deal. I bet, I, bet there's, I bet there's drugs involved there somewhere, Marge. No, no they, they, well, they thought gang, but it wasn't gang. They haven't said much yet because they just now uh, got the thing started. But, you know, that, that you get, wonder um, about what the kids, they're just so violent. But, of course, p humans have been violent since the dawn of time, you know. We've, we used to kill people cut their heads off since you know day one so well, we did. i don't we get um <coughs> we get stabbings in london quite a lot there was i think there's yeah. been two two young people this week killed in london you know yeah. well, be, uh, be, before before you think oh you know london this happens all the time you know that's two out of god knows how many million i can't remember the the, the exact amount of people living in london but there's millions um i should have a look for yeah. you how many people living in london maybe you know, so, but that's another two, you know, which is too, too many. Yeah. I was just going to log on and say hello, but you know you're a mesmerizer. The old timers, they'd say mesmerize, you know, yeah. when they hypnotize yeah. you. <laughs> I was sitting there listening, and I thought, I'll go back and say, then I got, mem you know, listening, and I thought, oh, I got to yes. keep, yes. keep listening. <laughs> you're, you're a mesmerizer. <laughs> Who is mesmerizer? Me? Here we yeah. are, here we are, here we are. Look, population of London in 2013. Uh, where oh. is this from? World Population Review is the site. Uh, the latest official estimate of the population of London is seven. Uh, sorry, in oh, hang on a minute. What is this say? Yeah, they go on about guns, and you know we're the here we president. Are, here we are. Ju July two thousand and ten was seven million eight hundred twenty-five thousand two hundred, uh. which I'm pleased to say I'm not one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I couldn't be living in it all that. Well, now the, your wire. gun laws are different than ours, uh, which this boy was from Australia. Yeah. They got shot this week. You know, Australia has a gun law, don't they, where they you can't own uh, guns or whatever. Don't, don't know I'm not about sure. that. Don't know. I know you. You. But, you all have guns in in the states, don't you? Yeah, we're pistol packing. I'm a pistol packing mama. You yeah. know, I. <laughs> Do you have one, Marge? I, would, I wouldn't shoot nothing. I mean, I, I do it because I feel secure. You know, you feel right. better okay. packing a gun. I understand. But I, I thought if someone actually was to hurt me, you know, it did take a lot. I might shoot him in the foot or something, you know, so I can run. <laughs>
Marge, when you buy a gun in the States, <coughs> do you need to fill out forms or do you just literally, and it's just like going and buying a pint of milk? Do you say, I love that one, please? No, no, you've got to have, you've got to have, well, I, I bought mine, you know, from a friend and yes. all that, so I don't, I didn't go through all the legal crap and yeah. I don't, I'm not legally, you know, I can't legally carry it. But everybody knows we do. But I've, every car that I used to detail cars for a living, cleaning, clean, you know, detailing. Yeah. Most every car I, I clean, you, you get up underneath the seat, there's a gun. You know, right, yeah. every, everybody carries a gun. Lean up it. But legally, you're supposed to take and, you know, have a permit and go through the course. And yeah. and when you buy yeah. a gun, you, you've got a waiting period or probably right. five minutes because now they've got it where they just check you online, you know, and you're instantly there. And you, do, you uh, don't think anything of that at all, do you? You know, it's just a normal thing. Yeah. Well, I don't like, like, I don't really like to have to have a gun, you yeah. know. But human beings are predators. We're a predator species, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Of course, it's true it, enough. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be honest, you know, once you become a vegetarian, you don't have to worry about all that now. You know, you don't need to shoot a tomato before you pick it. <laughs> you know, I mean, there'd be a lot, of, there'd be an awful lot of holes in tomatoes if people had to do that, wouldn't they? I, I you know. visualise you shooting tomatoes. You, you, you see a carrot, you see a yeah. carrot growing out of the ground, you don't need to shoot it first. <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? Yeah. It if you just, did, the, the it guys just the happily, right suits, it happily allows you, <laughs> happily allows you to grab its little ears and pull it out of the ground and put. And in the you corner. know, plants scream though. That they got research now that they can really sense fire. They oh. they put off. Yeah, you got to read up on this. See, these plants feel things. I got a video. I'll send you the link. Send it Thank over. Okay. They Send it over, Marge. All right, my darling. Talk. <laughs> nice okay. to talk to you, Marge. Oh, you gotta I've go. Got yeah, I've got your, I've got your uh, lovely email here to read, and a couple oh, of other long ones yeah, today, to so I'm going to read these. I'm going to try to listen while I fall asleep, so... Oh, we'll and try. I... My, my, my tones usually send people to sleep. More people listen <laughs> to this show now to fall asleep than to actually participate, No, no, I think, no really. actually, when you talk, see, I can't... i got to listen to what's next, you know? That's what I'm talking about, mesmerizing. You know, it's like at those movies that, that next week, you know, you got to find out what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Find out next week. I know you wait. You wait for the recording a little bit later on, won't you? You go, you people in, o in UK have a great day from Oklahoma. Lots of love, Marge. Bye, bye, darling. Bye, bye. Thanks for calling. There we are, Marge in Oklahoma, USFA. We love it. You can join in this morning if you're with us live. Then you can join in, or if you're watching the recording, you can join in or listen to the indeed the, the podcast. You can join in as well. Um, the email address in this show for you to send an email in at any time after you've watched the show, and uh, the email will generally come up in the next show is Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. All right, Chris at United Kingdom, sorry I'm just doing something on the other computer there, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you're with us live this morning, you can join in live. Now how do you know if you're with us live or not? Have a look at your clock. If it's just coming up to 10 past 11 on Friday the 23rd of August 2013, then indeed you are with us live and you can join in live. Either by Skype, my Skype username is Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S R E A R D O N. All right, Skype, all one word, Chris Reardon, C H R I S R E A R D O N. Or you can join in by telephone. We have a local London number, 020 8133 Or of course, if you're just happy to sit there and continuing listening, or watching to the show, that's fine as well, because there's uh, loads to get through. And I can't be here all day, because I've got to catch the train and go to the hospital to have my feet looked at again. Going to say hello today to uh, Nick, who sends in via Twitter. Now, Twitter is something I, I, I rarely go on Twitter. I have to say, I've only really, I'm a bit like a sheep with the Twitter. I've only really got it, because everyone else has. That's the only reason. And Nick says... I've been listening to you for about four years. Since you now accept audio messages, I may put together a little MP3 and send comments. That's fine with us. It's fine with us. You stick together a little MP3, Nick, and I'll be glad to um, uh, play that out for you, sir. All right? Use the email address for that, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. 
Um, hello to Albin. Albin, who says, hello Chris, I hope you're doing well. I haven't heard from Albin before, so this is, this is a new emailer. Your show is amazing, thank you very much sir. We, we, we try and please, we try and be friendly. It's all about sharing stories. It's not, I know I tell a lot of stories that of my experiences, but I like to hear your stories as well. Please, please send in emails about anything at all, you know, what you do with your life, where you are, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what you do for work, perhaps you're unemployed, you are unemployed, well what do you do in your spare time? Send me in the stuff about your life, it's all about sharing stories this show. Excuse me, I've got an itchy, itchy ear now. Oh dear. Itchy. Marge, I think you might have spat something into my ear while I was talking to you on the phone. Oh, no, no, I know what it is. That would be acid coming from my best mate's mouth. That's come down the phone, that will. And it's damaged my ear holes. <coughs> Um, Albin says, a real talk about real things by the real man to the real audience. How surprisingly simple idea, but the result is overwhelming. Do you think so? <laughs> Seven people can't be wrong who are with us live this morning. <laughs> we don't have, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I have a little joke with numbers and whatever. There's about, I think it's about 100, 150 people in general will either watch... Uh, oh, no, hang on, probably a bit more than that. But between about 150, 200 people either watch or listen to the show weekly. It's not like in the thousands. It always amazes me sometimes you go on these YouTube um, videos that other people do and they've got thousands of people watching. Some of them millions. I am happy when I've got like over 100. <laughs> or indeed on the podcast. The podcast might be something between 80 and 150 people. And I'm never quite sure, you know, we, some, one podcast might have a couple of hundred people what, listening. And the next one might have 60. And I'm not quite, I, I'm never quite sure why that is. How comes more get, some get more than the other? And it's the same show, perhaps with different subjects. Is it the subject that makes difference? I don't know. But uh, I'm glad you like the show. Albin says, the last two weeks... I have been in Croatia for family holidays and I realise that every country has a stupid government. Alban says, you know, Croatia joined the European Union in July, so they have to obey instructions given by the European Commission. As they ordered to fight against financial crimes, so the government started to fight. Each would have expected that that day that they will begin to uncover fraud in large companies. But the truth is somewhere else. It's complicated, difficult and inconvenient to fight against tycoons and I think the government is corrupted by these rich companies. We think, I think that as well, you know. I absolutely think that as well. Now and again we might get a big story on the news. We had one um, last year about Starbucks. Starbucks have been in this country for 10 years and at a, um, I'm so sorry, I've got a really itchy ear now for some reason, uh, and now what was it, um, a meeting, uh, oh what do you call it now? Anyway, they had a meeting with these people and they sat there blank faced and said that they had that Starbucks had made no profit in this country in the 10 years that they'd been there and I remember the woman an inquiry that's it and I remember it was an inquiry and I remember the woman sitting there saying to them you mean to tell us you've made no profit at all in 10 years and the bloke sat there and said yes and what do you think of that I don't believe a word of it they're hiding the profit. And then, I think they, they decided to give us some money. I can't remember the government some money. Like, some, something like, th was it three million pounds? You know, so, you know, saying, well, as a gesture, here's three million pounds. They take the mick, don't they? They absolutely take the mick. So yes, I think, I think governments are corrupted by rich companies. I really do. You just chuck them a backhand when they keep the mouth shut. You know. Um, oh, we're just going to, one second, what have I got to do there? There we go. Um, 
Albin says, however, nothing is more primitive and effective than to screw entrepreneurs in small businesses and average people. Or you can, I, I can tell you about small businesses. I know um, a couple of people who, who run pubs and they are absolutely screwed by rates and business rates and this and that and licenses for this and licenses for that. And they, they barely keep their heads above water. I mean, I, I, my, my, my very first girlfriend, her name was Fiona. I went out with her when I was uh, 18 years old. She and her husband, um, Nick, have just started running a pub. And when they told me that, I thought, oh my God, you, take, you don't know what you're taking on there. I hope they can make a success of it. I shall report back to you. It's called the Golden Pot. Okay? The Golden Pot in Basingstoke. They've just taken that over. And there's something they've never done before, and I think I gather I've been thinking about it for a long time. So I'll let you know how they get on. At the moment, they're redecorating it all, and, and I'm going to go down and have a little look um, when it's all finished. Maybe take the camera and the uh, microphone with us as well. But my other mate who runs a pub in Hemel Hempstead is constantly being clobbered by a new license required for this, a new license required for that. And this, this, you know, these things are not cheap. Very, very expensive to run a pub. And you wonder why, you know, it's four pound. And of course, the customers don't. A lot of customers don't realise that. All they see is the price of the price of the drink that keeps going up and up. And there's not a lot you can do about it, to be honest. Alvin says. So what happened to me? I paid some money in a local corner shop for groceries. This is in Croatia. No, I think this is in Croatia. Oh no, this, this is in. Because he's from Slovakia, Albin. Oh, anyway, uh, let, let's say it was in Slovakia. I paid some money in a local corner shop for groceries. Not very much, approximately five euros, which is about, which is about four pounds sixty in English. So it's about two dollars ninety in American. You see the way I can convert like that in my head? But you can't do that, can you? Oh, I don't miss a penny. Don't you worry about that. I'm very good with my money maths. I call it money maths. You know, I know what's owed to me. Don't you worry about that. Um, I gave some money to the cashier and wanted to go out of the shop. But she yelled, she yelled, you must take a receipt. I said, I don't want one. She said, you must take a receipt. He said, but why? She said, now it is to break the law if you leave the shop without a receipt. You may be fined by financial police because you violate the law about VAT. He said, but I really don't need this receipt. Anyway. He says, then I finally took the receipt and was about to leave the shop when I heard her shout behind me, there's a waste bin right in front of the shop and people generally throw their receipts in there. <laughs> I've got a story like that. Am I stupid or are lawmakers dumb? Or is the whole world going to be like the novel 1984 written by George Orwell? Tell me about it. It's like this in this bloody country now, let me tell you. Cameras all over the place. Now, I like to think that I don't do anything wrong, okay? You don't need to be watching me with those cameras. But in the same breath, I don't want to be watched all the time. I don't want a camera looking at me. It's a bit of a joke, really, where, certainly in this country, they take a very dim view if you go into, say you've got a, a child at school, okay, and they have a sports day, you wouldn't be allowed to take a camera in there and take photographs, okay? In case you're taking program or, uh, uh, photos of the dear little children and doing things with those photos. And yet, you and me and children are constantly being watched by cameras in the street. How do you know what pervs are sitting there behind those cameras in traffic places and all this watching you and me and children? So how comes it's right for them to do it and not to take pictures of your own children? How ridiculous is that? 
and uh, he says cheers that's from Albin in Slovakia so nice to hear from you Albin don't let that be the only email that comes in sir we like to hear from people week in week out okay what's going to email address anyone else that's never emailed before where are you and what do you do the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Um, the funny thing about laws and that, years ago, about 23 years ago, I used to work at a place called Harpo's in Ells Court. It's not there anymore. And I was a DJ there. And on a Sunday night, there was this rule. Okay, we weren't allowed to open the club, which is downstairs, on Sunday nights, for late, you know, like till two in the morning, unless we gave people a meal to eat. Didn't matter what it is, you had to give people a meal. You weren't allowed to offer the meal, you had to give the meal. This was the law. Unless we did this, we weren't allowed to open. So. It was the same meal every week. I'll tell you exactly what it was. People would come down the stairs. And there, at the bottom of the stairs, was a trellis table. Someone would hand them a plate. The next person would put some rice on the plate. The person after would put some, I think it was mincemeat on the plate. So it was like chilli con carne, okay? Not for vegetarians, unfortunately, but it didn't matter too much. So remember, once again, they came down the stairs, people, if they wanted to come in. They were given a paper plate. On there would go a, a, a thing of rice, you know, a spoon for a big spoon of rice, then a big spoon of mincemeat. At the end of the table was a bin. So you know what was happening, wasn't it? It would just go along and end up in a bin. What a terrible waste of food. But that was the only way they were allowed to open the club. That's about 23 years ago. Uh, Mike says, don't say too much, they might class you as a terrorist under the 2002 Act. I'm hardly a terrorist, am I? I don't believe with going around killing people like that. That's uh, just, no, that's another story altogether. Another story altogether. So there we are. Thank you uh, for writing in, Albin. Nice to hear from you, sir. Okay. Don't forget the email address again, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's the email address. Um, I've just got to... Oh, I've just got to turn something on here. One minute. And um, what was the other thing I had? I've got to do something else here. Right, let me just load something in there. Loading. Stand by. Stand by. Loading. Where's that gone there? Just think, if I had someone here, like a technical person, I could just carry on talking to you, couldn't I? Instead of, um... Is that it? That might be it there. I think that's it. No, that's not it. One minute. I could just talk to you without having to do all these other little bits and pieces, couldn't I? Uh, that must be it. Is that 12? No. To that's it there. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, just stop that. Stop. Stop. Pause. Back. There we are. Right. Another email then. This one's from John. Hello, John. And he says, "Hi, Chris. I've been out of the loop for a while. You certainly have, John." A long, long time. I haven't heard from John for a long, long time. Did you know that Holland has no DAB radio? Why is that then? A load of old rubbish anyway, if you ask me. Complete and utter waste of time. There was nothing ever wrong with FM. We don't need DAB radio, do we? I'm sure we don't. One of my colleagues in a science faculty asked me why we British are so stubborn? Well, you speak for yourself. Don't think I'm stubborn at all. Do you think so? I was annoyed, but I levelled with him. If British weren't so stubborn, your grandmother would have been speaking German. 
He said she can speak German. I thought that was a good answer. But I got back at him by saying the word nutmeg. It's a long story and it involves America. I don't get that one. Nutmeg. No, I don't understand that. John says the Dutch are bloody ungrateful if you ask me. <laughs> anyway, I was travelling up from Stansted Airport. Oh, what are we doing there? Stansted Airport on the train today and a woman gave me a letter. It read, Dear Seat 70 Occupant. Brackets, I do not normally write in green biro. Close brackets. Thank you for being so polite when I accosted to you. Brackets, she thought I was playing Lady Gaga's new single as if I would. Close brackets. It's a pity that the lady behind you had no manners and it turned out that she was playing the loud music. Please enjoy your life. <laughs> Just imagine being on a train and handed something like that. And that was from Barbara. Her name was Barbara. John says, do you think I have cause for worry, Chris? She left her address and it is Miss Barbara from Rains Park. When she got off at Grantham, she waved to me. Bye. I have to tell you, when I, when I do FaceTime, because uh, on, on iPhone you can do FaceTime, you can do like video calling. When I do FaceTime with my nephew, uh, my great nephew, George, he, he's learned to wave now. So I wave at the camera and he waves like that. It's ever so cute. Ever so cute. I'll Next time I go up to my sisters, I'll take the camera and I'll get them to wave to you as well, okay? Strangely enough, the last older woman to proposition me, uh, to proposition me, who came from Rains Park, was an oil millionaireess and asked me if I wanted to be her special friend. Oh. And did I want to go with her to Brazil and meet her old mate, Alice Cooper, who was headlining a festival there? Really? Alice Cooper? Wow. I stayed at her apartment, which was full of bits from Alice's strange show. Pictures of her with Alice, Lemmy from Motorhead, and other rock gods. Photographs of naked vampire ladies wearing Nazi uniforms and a working guillotine. <laughs> Head off. You know when they cut your heads off? Apparently you live for a few seconds afterwards. Did you know that? There was this story once, I think many, many years ago, where they, where they agreed with the person having his head cut off, or her, whatever it was, that they should blink twice if they could still understand. And so the head was cut off and they went to the basket and spoke, can you still hear us? And he blinked twice. Can you still hear us? Blink twice. Can you still hear us? And there was nothing, so they were dead then. Isn't that awful? I wonder what you go, what goes through your head when, when, you're, when your head's just sitting in that basket. How dreadful, isn't it? Unfortunately, I declined and never got to meet Alice, as the term special friend had ominous consequences, and I felt like borderline necrophilia. <laughs> John, John! Sorry to bring the, show, the tone of the show down. Yes, you do. You really do, John. On a happier note, I will be having a pint soon with Richard Vobes. Excellent. Who does a, a wonderful, wonderful podcast. Then do, uh, Have a look at that on uh, 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 Boys and Girls. Richard Vobes, V-O-B-E-S. Another podcaster from uh, the UK who does a really good show. The Naked Explorer, when he comes up north to do a special documentary on the Black Death for the BBC. I've not heard your last three shows, but have them ready when I not next walk around the streets of Eindenhoven. Best regards from Cyber John. Thank you, Cyber John. And Cyber John sent me a couple of um, Skype messages this week as well. Um, uh, 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 yesterday, actually. And um, I didn't spot them. So I've replied to them now, but he was a bit annoyed that I hadn't replied to them instantaneously. Sorry about that, John. I don't generally have Skype running unless there's a show on. I do have it on sometimes. I think the mobile phone logs on to it automatically. You know, but obviously if I'm driving or something, I can't reply, but I have replied now, uh, Mr. Cyber John. So thank you very much for that email. Much appreciated. David in Slovakia is with us live this morning and says, Hi Chris, I have a lot of stupid stories from my now capitalism country. I will share these stories, I promise, from Albin. You make sure you share those, we want to hear them. 
okay? Send us another one in for next week, all right, Albin? Thank you very much. And uh, please share the link to the show from your friends. The main link for the show, uh, for the recordings, is at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? Unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Hello to Gary, who's with us live this morning. Good morning, Gary. Who says, hi, Chris, was talking with Terry Turner last night when we saw that you had entered the Big Brother house, a.k.a. Lewis Spence. I don't think so, dear. I can't stand Lewis Spence. I am nothing like Lewis Spence. Please do not compare me to one of those awful poofs that's on the television. Lewis Spence or that dreadful Rylan. I am nothing like them. How dare you, Gary? I'm tempted to block you, Gary, to be honest. I really am. He says, uh, go, uh, go you, if you were in there, you would surely win. What do your listeners think? There is no way I would have anything to do with Big Brother. I have no interest in that. I would not go on the show. I don't watch it. I don't know who's on there. When people, sometimes these Big Brother contestants turn up at, at you know, places I'm DJing or doing karaoke, and people come back, oh, can you see that so-and-so of Big Brother to say, oh, I don't know who that is. Who, what one? And they point. I say, well, which one? I don't know who they are. I have no idea who these people are, and I have no interest in them whatsoever, I'm afraid. Big Brother is really the pits, the pits of British television. It really is. There's a lot of it on at the moment. No doubt there'll be another series of The Only Way is Essex coming along soon to upset us all. Well, it'll, it'll upset you if you watch it. You know, is there anyone watching this crap anymore? I don't think there is. Television went completely wrong when Bruce Forsyth stopped hosting the Generation Game. That's when it all went downhill. Or when the cast from Dad's Army started dying. It all went downhill from then. There's rarely anything good on the telly other than documentaries and things like that. I like, I like watching documentaries. I've been watching two, uh, How to Get a Council House and what's the other one? What's that one with Gloria Honeyford? I quite like that on BBC One, I think it is, where she goes around when, when, when people are being ripped off. I quite like that. One more email then and then we're off. From Marge, who's already spoken on the phone today. Good morning, Marge. She's, and I asked the question last week, did you look younger after beauty treatment? Those of you that watch the show will probably look at me at the moment and think, well, you must have had beauty treatment, you're very good looking. No, I've had nothing done at all. Nothing. Not a thing. My best mate, Ron, has had fillers. Where well, he's got li like lines from, from the nose going down to his mouth. He's had fillers. Don't look any different to me. I'm sorry, I hope you don't mind me saying that, dear. Looks exactly the same. Anyway. <laughs> he says I should have injections in the side of my head to get rid of lines. Against my face and my forehead. I say, grow old, grow old naturally. Oh, sorry, there's a little message here from Sean. Well, Sean Riches, I didn't see you. You must send an email in, Sean. I miss your Facebook messages sometimes. He said, man, I feel like a woman is, is Shania's, Shania, need, Shania needs to release a record, Shania. Man, I feel like a woman. Da, 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 da. Ma Mike says, Big Brother is Bottom Feeder TV. I'm not quite sure what that is. Bottom Feeder TV, Mike. It is. Mark says, yes. You do and you don't look better after feeling, after having beauty treatment, depending on many factors. We can comb our hair, brush our teeth, put on nice clothes, and that can be beauty treatment. Any kind of grooming is considered to be so. My idea is that, let's say, metaphorically, that's a long word, Marge, and I'm glad I was able to, to bring it across to you. If you are looking to buy a horse and it's old and ugly, according to how we mentally judge what is ugliness, and the we put in a nice new saddle and bridle on it and it makes the horse look really special. Some people do that by buying beauty treatments. Are you suggesting that I look like a horse, Marge? Horses like eating apples and sugar lumps, don't they? 
Why haven't got horses got rotten teeth if you keep giving them lumps of sugar though? You would think the horse is worth far more money and a nicer horse, but did the horse change or just our perception of the horse? Maybe the horse, even old, will have bright eyes and a very spirited nature. Bright eyes burning like fire. We seem to project how we feel on the inside on how we look on the outside. This powerful mindset can almost overcome any real physical appearance, however. You see beauty models with such horrible attitudes, then project an ugliness which will overshadow any physical beauty they have. Oh, that's so true. That is so true. There, there are some very beautiful models and um, pop singers, really. And they just come across as really ugly. You wouldn't go near them with a barge pole. Doesn't matter what they look like. You wouldn't want to go near them. Horrible, horrible people. I know a lot of those. I know a lot of those that come into the clubs. A lot of the gay boys. You know, who look beautiful. But are really quite unpleasant people. Not all of them. Of course not all of them. Just some. Some. But that's the same in, same in all walks, you know. All walks of life. Unless, however, you're also shallow, and that doesn't affect you. See, someone with bright eyes, beautiful smile and warm personality, even when they are extremely fat or ugly physically, and that illusion that they project will again overshadow that socially standardised physical defect. So have I got to be nicer, Marge? Will people fancy me if I become nicer? <laughs> So in conclusion, I think that for the most part beauty is in the mind of the beholder and the person we are viewing that can pay a factor in the beauty of that person. And the phrase, one person's trash is another person's treasure, is an old age that may apply. So be beautiful both on the inside and the out, not just physically but also spiritually, just like weeds can produce beautiful flowers. So a person shine from within and overplay the social physical ugliness standards in my humble opinion of course i hope that makes sense who decides in the end what is beauty or what is ugly is it the magazines society or isn't all just beautiful because it's part of nature and universe i say even a cow manure it patty even a cow manure, manure patty is beautiful if you look at it in a certain way. Oh, I don't know about that much. <laughs> Till next time, from Marge. I don't know about the cow patty, Marge. In fact, I think, because we've nearly finished the show now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Marge. I'm going to go outside later and find some, uh, some, some of Katie the cat's waste, my cat Katie. I'm going to find some of her dirt later and have a look at it, try and look at it from different angles and see if it's beautiful at all. In fact, later on, when I use my own toilet and go for number twos, I might just, just get up and, you know, have a little look round and see if I can actually see any beauty in there. But I've got to be honest with you, Marge, I think we're going to disagree on that one. Thank you for the email. Um, Gary says, sorry, Chris, didn't mean to offend you. Well, I'm sorry, dear. You know, I'm nothing like Louis. I don't think I'm anything like Louis Spencer at all, Gary, am I? <laughs> Please don't mention the words Big Brother on this programme. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. And Mike says, um, uh, Big Brother, uh, bottom feeder is a loser who profits from the fortunes of others, a low or despicable person. Some apples look good, but rotting inside. <laughs> I know a lot of apples that look good and rotting inside, Mike. I really do, believe me. Same applies to people. Yes, of course it does. Um, finally today, we're not going to have time to tell you about my broken phone. I'll have to do that next Friday. I think we might have a little bit more time next Friday. I don't think I've got hospital appointment next Friday uh, for my feet. I might have. I can't remember now. Or is it today that I haven't got one? Hang on a minute. What's it say on my calendar here? I've got calendar. One minute. I hope I haven't got this wrong. I shall have to double check that. Uh, calendar. Calendar. Where's that? There it is. Calendar. 
Oh no, I have got it today. I might not have an appointment there next week. Six. Oh, I've got to cancel one. That's six. I'll have to double check that. Uh, finally today, uh, we had an email last week from Ross Patzel. Do you remember that? Um, let me see if I've still got it here. Where are we now? Inbox. Oh, maybe I haven't got it here now. I thought Ross had sent in something. I oh, can't find that now. Uh, No, I, I, sorry, I can't find that. I, I thought Ross had sent something in. Maybe he didn't. But anyway, there was a long email we read out from Ross last week. Apparently, he didn't send in an email. It was... Oh, dear, just a second. Things are going wrong now. Obviously, I've, I've been talking too long, I think. That's what's happened. And, um... Oh, there we are. My, my equipment is telling me that you've done long enough now and you must shut up. Which isn't nice, is it really? But that's how it is. Yeah, Ross never sent in the email. It was someone pretending to be him. Now, of course, it wasn't wasn't very um, it wasn't derogatory or, or nasty in in any way, really. Uh, so so that's good. But apparently, Ross didn't even send in the email. So we're not quite sure where that came from. We have an idea, but we're not a hundred percent sure. So whoever sent in that email, are you brave enough? Are you brave enough to tell us if it was you or not? If so, please send in another email with your true identity. Alright? And finally today, Carl in Yorkshire sent this on a little while ago and I forgot to read it out. You remember we were talking about inks, computer inks, why is it so expensive? And I said to you, um, I've had a couple of printers and I've tried so-called compatible inks and on both occasions they've mucked up my printer head. Carl says he always buys his stuff on um, uh, eBay from a company called Ink Power and has never had any problem with ink from there. In my case it's on both occasions... Oh dear, just a second. Oh, what's going on here? It's done now. Is that going to work now? Oh, come on! Stupid machine! I'll leave it. Yes, um, he says he's used compatible inks from uh, someone called Ink Power and has never had a problem. So I, I don't know what to say about that. But as I say, on both occasions when I've bought compatible inks, um, they've, they've mucked up my computer, uh, uh, my print head, and I've had to go and buy a new printer. So I think I'll just stick and, and pay and force myself to pay the vast sums of money that they charge for computer ink, which is uh, quite outrageous. Time to go now, boys and girls. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Don't forget, as always, you can subscribe to the show, either the audio or the video version, on iTunes. Simply go to the podcasts and type in United Kingdom Talk. You're given the option of downloading the audio or uh, subscribing to the audio or the video version, completely free of charge. Um, the YouTube, you can subscribe via YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK is my username there, okay, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, or indeed the main website for the show is at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk there you can find the shows going back seven years now okay once again united kingdom talk dot co dot uk email address for the last time today send in your emails to chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk i shall see you again here live next friday morning at 10 30 uk time you have a lovely bank holiday weekend bye bye now